like saying, fight your demons. This is a saying which relates to the obstacles and issues that one has in their lives. And this is something they have to do before they can progress. But it actually holds more significance than you realize, especially as Muslims. Because what we find is that when we have certain issues and we believe that it's gin related, and of course sometimes it is gin related, and when we feel that we have these afflictions, then what we tend to do is we go to get Rukia done for us. Uh, Rukia, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's um, it's basically it's a, a form of healing um, by using the Quran, a uh, recitation of the Quran, certain verses of the Quran, which is recited, and um, it helps a person. And um, at the time of the the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sahabas, they used to do um, Rukia for things even like snake bites and stuff like that. So it's a form of healing. Um, but we found in modern times that these uh, the, the rukia has been done um, for jinn affliction and and especially for possession jinn possession. Um, now this in itself is quite extraordinary because when you think about it, a lot of people have been asking the same question. And what this question is is during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Were there any cases of jinn possession? And to date, not one person has been able to uh, clearly define a hadith or a period at that time where someone's physical body was taken over by a jinn. So, if this is true, if this is totally true that it didn't happen at that time, then is it possible for it to be happening now? Is it a genuine thing? And this is why a big question mark has been put on this whole concept of jinn possession. And uh, there have been one or two uh, sheikhs who have actually, they, they don't believe in it. They don't accept it. But um, at the same time, obviously, there seem to be so many cases now. And uh, we know that in the Asian continent, we know that uh, it's a very strong, firm belief that you know this is something which happens all the time. Uh, and obviously, that's spreading now here into the UK. We're finding more and more cases of this happening. And um, the Rakis, the people that are doing the Rukia, they have accepted that it's something which is happening, and they are obviously spending a lot of time um, dealing with these cases so this is the interesting thing anyway the question I want to ask is how does that leave a person um, who believes that they're afflicted or are actually afflicted or are possessed how does that leave them because when you go to the doctors and uh, you have a sickness, an illness of some kind. You don't have the knowledge to um, treat yourself, right? You don't have the knowledge, you don't know what medicine needs to be given. So you need that doctor to actually give you that medic to prescribe the medication for you. With Rukia, that's a little bit different, isn't it? Because you know what Rukia entails, it entails reciting verses of the Quran and using them to help yourself from these afflictions and it requires you to have your Iman needs to be good and you need to have firm belief in what you are doing so this means that you need to, to, to fortify yourself um, by, by means of your Iman and your knowledge of the Quran and if, even if you don't have knowledge of the Quran then whatever you do know you can use that and you can it is your belief and your 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 persistence your resilience is is what should help you and just just to reinforce what I'm saying in terms of you treating yourself in Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimullah's book on Tawheed he mentions about the 70,000 people who would enter straight into Jannah without um, reckoning. And, and these people 
are the people who used to do Rukia on themselves. So you can see that there is a lot of benefits in one fighting their own demons. So my advice to everyone right now, including myself, is that next time you hear about somebody who has been possessed or believes they're being possessed or is under affliction of the jinn, or if it is yourself that is experiencing that, and it's time to fight. It's time to fight, 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 and do this yourself. And have Iraqi there if need be to help you, but you need to do this yourself. This is my opinion. You've got to fight. You've got to do what it takes. You're in the boxing ring with that gin. You're in the boxing ring and you are training yourself. So you need to fight, fight, fight. And do not ever, ever give up until the fight is done. That's just my advice and my thoughts on this one.